I hope everybody is doing great. I am filming this time a tutorial on how to do buttercream, but this time it's gonna be cream cheese buttercream, crusting cream cheese buttercream. God, that's a lot of words. Anyway, yes, crusting cream cheese buttercream. Yeah. I know this is a weird look right now, but <laughs> look at that. It's a bowl of cream cheese. Heavy. Ah, look at how pretty that is. Crusting cream cheese buttercream. Crusting cream cheese buttercream. <laughs> well, enough talk. Let's get started with the tutorial. In this video, we're going to be making crusting cream cheese buttercream. Now, what is crusting buttercream? I know a lot of people don't know what it is. Crusting buttercream is a buttercream that creates a film around the cake. This film can be smoothed out almost to look like fondant. This crust is created by the right combination of sugar to the right amount of fat. But the type of fat that is used is very important too. We need to use high ratio shortening or a vegetable shortening of high quality for this to happen. So for those who ask if I can do this recipe with butter, yes you can. Will it be a crusting buttercream? No, it won't be a crusting buttercream. It would taste really good, it would be a softer buttercream, but you won't be able to smooth it the same way because of the vegetable shortening content in this recipe this recipe is stronger for hotter humid areas i live in florida and this worked perfect for me first of all let's get started with the ingredients you will need a half a cup of high ratio shortening high ratio shortening is a vegetable shortening that contains some of the trans fat the reason you want to use this is because it makes the taste of your icing a lot smoother and is less grainy. But if you cannot find high ratio and if you use Crisco or other type of vegetable shortening, make sure it is of good quality. You will also need half a cup of unsalted butter at room temperature. One 8 ounce bar of cream cheese at room temperature. 1 tablespoon of clear vanilla extract 2 pounds of sifted sugar and half a teaspoon of salt The first thing you want to do is sift all your sugar This is a very important step You don't want lumps in your icing If you have lumps and you try to color your sugar it would show the lumps So just avoid that happening by sifting your sugar. Now you can add the salt to the sugar and mix it together. It's time to measure our high ratio shortening. You can use a measuring cup like this. This one actually is really neat because it has two sides, one for solids and one for liquids. The thing is you have to make sure that you fill it properly. The best way is to use a scale. My scale has ounces or grams, so I can choose whatever I want to use. I use plastic to actually put my high ratio on top of the scale. This is a very easy way for me to measure and have an easy cleanup. But if you use a bowl, keep in mind that you have to make sure that your scale is set to zero after you have put your bowl on top of the scale. It is very important that your cream cheese and your butter are at room temperature. That way you won't have lumps on your mix. Place your butter in the mixer. After you have creamed your butter for a little bit, you want to add your cream cheese to it. You want to mix this well until it is all mixed and smooth. Now you can add your high ratio shortening. You want to mix all of this together as well as you can so they look creamy and smooth. As you can see, I am using the paddle attachment to mix these ingredients. You don't want to use the whisk. The whisk is for bringing air into the mix and we don't want air in the buttercream. Air can create pockets 
and that will be more difficult to make our buttercream smooth. Make sure to scrape your bowl to make sure all the ingredients are mixing well. Now it's time to add our extracts. I am adding vanilla, but make sure it's clear vanilla extract. This one I'm adding now is cream cheese extract. It's not necessary, but if you want extra cream cheese flavor, you can add it to the mix. Make sure that your vanilla is clear. If you use a brown vanilla, it'll color your buttercream, and you really don't want to do that. Now it's time to add the sugar. Make sure that the setting on the mixer is on the lowest speed. I add the sugar in small increments and I make sure to scrape the bowls here and there so it all mixes well. After you added your last cup of sugar, make sure to scrape the bowl once again and give a good last mix. At this point, you wanna make sure you mix it well you can raise the speed a little bit, but do not overmix. Overmixing can bring air to the mix, and air can mean more bubbles, which are more difficult to smooth. So to avoid overmixing, I just finish by hand. I like to work with small batches because I can control the quality of my buttercream. In a bakery, you have bigger mixers and you can make more buttercream at once. At home, I rather work with smaller amounts. Some people will fill the bowl to the top and cover the paddle. Personally, I find this option a little bit too messy, but you do what works best for you. And this is the finished product. Beautiful, smooth icing, look at that. If you want your buttercream to be completely white, then cut all the butter out and compensate it with the high ratio. You can add then some butter extract to compensate for the lack of butter and make this icing taste really good. Now don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can visit my channel for more tutorials or you can visit my website for recipes and more. Crusting buttercream cream cheese. Say it. Crusting buttercream cream cheese. Say it. Maybe you'll be able to say it faster. Crusting buttercream cream cheese. I did it! <laughs> One thing, do not do this while you're working. This is wrong. I'm not working though, so I'm gonna enjoy it. Ta-ta! <laughs> want some? I know you want some.